So I'm going to show you how to play a 4x10 puzzle in my book Tomoku. Now essentially, I'm just going to lay out these game pieces on here uh, the same way that puzzle 22 is laid out. And I'm going to make one more exception. Instead of putting a square here, I'm just going to put a triangle here. And I'm going to put lower left triangles wherever I see a square in the puzzle. So you can see a square, squares there. I'm going to replace those with lower left triangles. And I'm going to replace these ones with upper right triangles. And you'll see as I do it. Okay, so there the game is set up just like the puzzle in the book. Okay, so let's actually play the game now. Here are the two most important things about this game. One of them is that all of the game pieces that are in these columns need to stay in a column, and all of the game pieces in the rows need to stay in their rows. You would never take this piece, for example, and move it to another row. It will always stay in here. It will end up placed somewhere in there. Okay. The other thing is that I would I can't have four game pieces meeting at one point. So I would never have this configuration, for example, because these four game pieces meet at this point. That's bad luck. Okay. That's the number one rule here, is that four touching one point is bad luck. And the last thing is, since these square pieces, which are now cut into triangles, fit in a row and a column, for example, if I want to use this one, I need to bring it to a place where it matches up something from a column. And if I want to put it back, I need to make sure that I take the upper triangle and put it back in the, in the row, and the lower triangle and put it back in the column. Okay? So, let's try to solve the puzzle. I'm just going to make a couple of things easier for you. First of all, I'm just going to show you where the places are that I can put the, uh, the one by one squares by joining an upper triangle with a lower triangle. So, here's one. And I just need, to, uh, the way I'm doing this is I'm just looking at the squares that have, uh, that have triangles in their row and triangles in that column. Okay, so this is not a place because there's nothing in that row, not a place. But this is because there are some in that row. Uh, in fact, so those are the places that I can put those triangles. So here's a column that's totally filled with the column tiles. And those tiles are all the same. So they must just go in like that. There's no other way to do that one. From here. If this were covered by one tile that's different from this tile, I would have one, two, three, four tiles at this point. So that can't happen. That means that these two squares need to be covered by the same tile. That would be like that. Now it becomes really obvious what happens here. These are just one by one squares. So I'm going to use a lower triangle for each of them. And an upper triangle. Now that these triangles are uh, on the grid, they count as one tile. And here's another place where there are four squares, and they're covered by two tiles already. And since all these four squares meet at one point, the remaining two need to be covered by the same. If this were covered by a one by one square like that, then these have to be covered by different tiles. So it must be covered like this.
Here's another place where this piece is forced. It has to be covered by a one by two. Uh, the only thing left in these in these columns are uh, are these lower triangles. So I'm going to use them to make one by ones, and I have to use everything in the in everything that's given in the puzzle. So here's another place where the uh, the one by twos fill the whole column, and another place where I need that to make sure I have my lucky tiling. And I messed up again. So there should be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four of these. Okay, obviously I moved that accidentally at some point. Okay, and so this is the only, these are the only moves that are left. And that is the solution. I can find the solution in the book.